Hello. Hi, uh, Christine. Hello? Christine? Mm-hmm. This is Roy from ADT. I'm just calling to let you know that there's no alarms being tripped at your house currently. Well, I would hope not. I'm in my house, and I don't hear any coming off. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm saying. You wouldn't hear it because there's no alarms happening right now. There's no fires, no break-ins, nothing like that. Everything's fine. Okay. We, um, who are you? I'm with ADT. Okay. We just, we, we're calling. It's a new service we offer. We're calling our customers every hour or two, and we're just going to let you know uh, that everything's fine. We're not your customers. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> hey, honey. We got a guy on the phone that says that uh, we're customers of ADT, the alarm service. Is that, right? Is that right? Yeah, here, pick this one up. This one's good. I like this. Go ahead and explain this to my husband. I don't want to. Your husband sounds he like an asshole. He even knows my name, by the way. Sounds like well, an but we've asshole. never had ADT at this house, so thanks for your try. But, I mean, and we all were are perfectly fine with their security in our house, so appreciate the offer, and have them take us off your list, please. Hey, it's not a list, motherfucker. It's not a list. I'm, we're, you're a customer already. It's, hey, it's, listen, dipshit. Don't call me in my fucking house and call me a motherfucker. Yeah, I don't, I don't have what? ATT in my house. I'm gonna go ahead it's not ATT. ATT in my I'm house for my security system. It's not ATT, so stupid. Who the hell you you call, I hope this is fucking recorded, and I hope fucking your boss bust your balls no, about it. No, it's not. This is a joke. It's not a joke. Never fucking call me any, or anybody else their house and, 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 and tell, call them motherfucker. Hey, tell your wife Got to it? shut the fuck up. Tell your wife to shut the fuck up. No, right. we don't have you to shut the fuck you. up. You called our home uninvited. You now. fucking telemarketing dipshit. Go fuck yourself. I'm not a telemarketer, you retard. And we will be calling. Trust me, I am a bitch from hell, and I will find out who you are and what you're doing. No, you won't. Trust me on that, you little prick. I'm, I'm just... Cr- go swallow some cum, you little faggot. Whoa. Whoa. And they're gone. Hello there, everyone. You're listening to The Snowplow Show, episode 483. This is the show where we call people up on the phone and present them with incredibly bizarre situations just to see how they handle it. It's like a psychological experiment, you know? That's all it is. It's not like we're prank calling people. Today's episode is sponsored by Whoa There, Michael S., Robert W., Todd K. 63, and Not Dan. Thanks, all five of you, for sponsoring today's show and being supporters over at patreon.com slash phone losers, the place where everyone who listens to this show should be supporting this show. And if you're not, what the hell, damn freeloader. I have just a few things before we get started today. Number one would be PLA Comics number five by Casey Jones. That is today's show art. If you haven't seen it, you should go look at it. He does comics based on PLA prank calls, and he's on episode five now. This one is based on the lube job, prank call, lost my weed pipe thing, you know. Go take a look, snowplowshow.com. It's kind of like Olga's comics, but in a completely different style. This Saturday, Mr. Biggs is going to be on the PLA call-in show. I forget which time. Let me look at my calendar here. 5.30 p.m. Pacific Time, which is 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Both Mr. Biggs and Roger from the Stick It With Mr. Biggs podcast are going to be co-hosting with me on the PLA show. We're going to be taking your calls. You can ask Mr. Biggs and Roger anything you want within reason. And that should be a lot of fun. So be sure to be listening to that this coming Saturday. That's this Saturday, the 21st. And the following Saturday, I'm going to have Jack Heliquin on. And that should be weird, but let's not worry about that right now. Forget I even said that. This Saturday, Mr. Biggs and Roger, put it in your calendars. Do not forget. And if you don't know who the hell Mr. Biggs is, you need to go over to askmrbiggs.com and listen to everything he's ever done. Go ahead and just pause this show and do that real quick. I'll have links to that in the show notes. And speaking of Mr. Biggs, last thing here, I was talking to him yesterday and he's like, hey, I need to show somebody the PLA stuff. What's the cornerstone episode? What's the one episode I should make this person listen to so that they can get an idea of what you do? And people ask me that kind of often. And I'm always like, I don't know. I have no answer for him. I'm like, go listen to Mr. Dabalina's wonderful world of prank calls over at worldofprankcalls.com. That'll give you an idea of what we do here. 
because, you know, that show, it cuts out all the long intros like this one and the voicemails and only plays the really good calls that I like. But that got me thinking. Episode 500 is coming up. That's what, like uh, 17 episodes away now? What are we on? 483? So episode 500, that needs to be a really good episode with a very short intro and no voicemails at all. So I've set up a couple of threads. I put one on Reddit and I put one on the PLA Facebook group. I will put links to these in the show notes. And if you want to suggest things for me to put in the Cornerstone episode for new listeners to hear, that will hopefully entice them into becoming regular listeners of the Snowplow Show. You can suggest things to put into this episode, and I will take your suggestions seriously. And I've already got enough suggestions to do an entire episode, so obviously I need to do much more of these. I should have been doing these like every hundred episodes from the very beginning, but no, I never do anything special for anniversary episodes. Anyway, if you want to help with that, go to the show notes and click on the links to the PLA Facebook group and the PLA Reddit and tell us what your favorite thing about this show is that we should include in the Cornerstone episode. I'm only going to make it like an hour long, so I can't put a ton of stuff in there, but I will look at every single suggestion and seriously consider anything that you suggest. Today, we have a live show for you to listen to. This is a live show that happened uh, two days ago, I guess. What day was that? I guess this would have been Tuesday night. I did a nighttime show, which is something I don't do very often anymore. But it was important that this show happen at nighttime because I think it was in a hobo sode. I could be wrong about that. But I called up a few people in a homeowners association area late at night. I woke them up and I said, hey, it's Roy or whatever from the homeowners association. And I just woke up and I was having this, this dream that you had forgotten to bring your garbage cans back in in my dream. And you can't do that. What do you, what do you think you're doing? I thought that was a hilarious premise that Cody No Name, I believe, came up with. And I said in that show, I've got to do this live so I can use ideas from the chat room. And it'll be a lot of fun. And it was a lot of fun. You know, it, it didn't all go exactly as planned. And I ended up not being from the Homeowners Association for most of the calls. But it was still a lot of fun. And that's what you're about to hear right now. Here it is. The live show from two days ago. Who the fuck you think you're fucking with? We're friends. 745, why don't white belt grow to Benz? I'm baby Joshi, the third best baby. A fetus in Adidas, dancing like I'm Patrick Swayze, like a villain. I'm always chilling. Yes, they call me baby Joshi, cause I'm all about my scrillions. Buy diapers, sell pampers. I'm half Ned Flanders, half Dion Sanders. Cause I'm hitting baseballs for the Lord. And guess what, mom, I'm through with chores. These dishes, these dishes, these motherfucking dishes. Do them all yourself. These are my wishes, these chores, these chores, these motherfucking chores. Gotta check the stats like baseball scores. So step up to the plate. Burning daydreams, a cool dream escape. Blah! Cool Hello? Dreams. Hello? Hello, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's Roy from the Homeowners Association. I'm so, oh, sorry, who is this? It, it's, I'm from the, the Property Owners so- Association. It's, yeah. it's Roy. Um, is, is Tom around? He's sleeping. Oh, my goodness. I, I thought this might be a problem. Um, I, I was just, uh, I was in bed just a few minutes ago. Yes. And I was, um, I was having a, a dream that, uh-huh. that, that Tom was, um, Tom, Tom I, I had a dream that he didn't cut the grass, that he didn't cut the he grass. Did- uh-huh. And it was like above, it was like three inches above uh-huh. the ground, like way above the limited amount, yeah. the, the homeowners association rule limits. Uh-huh. And I was worried it might be, a, uh, you know, it might be a real dream. Yeah. So um, is, that's not a problem there, is it? Uh, no, we're fine. Are you sure? Like when's the last time you mowed? Well, <laughs> the, just like last week. I don't know. It, I mean, it, it just grew pretty quickly yeah but you know that's it's against the rules and like i haven't been over there or anything but my dreams do tend to uh come true so uh is this is this a threat what no of course not why would it be a threat i'm with the homeowners association why would you think it's a threat because it's um one thirty in the morning i know i was and asleep. you're calling us i was asleep I mean, and i, was I don't asleep. i just don't understand this but we're going to bed no Thank look i was having that. a dream ma'am that's all and, and what I just, is this? 
I, I was just having a bad a bad dream that your grass was too tall. Yeah. Because we can't have that in the neighborhood. People are always breaking that rule. And I thought you guys were breaking that rule. Like I had a dream that like Tom was purposely ignoring the rule. He's not. We have a man to do the yard. We don't even do our own yard. Well, when's the last time the man did it? I don't know. I'd have to look at his invoice. I have no idea. It hasn't been that long ago. Well, don't get snippy. Um, can you go check? No, but can I mean, it's the middle of the night. Well, not really the middle. It's like the first <sighs> Good, one, one, one third of it. Okay. Not, not bad for a first call, right? Let me cross them off the list. So, hey, everyone, I'm, I'm doing a show tonight. Late night show. You don't you don't see that every day with me. Yeah, I agree, Grumpy Dumpster. What, what the fuck is her problem? Um, so yeah, tonight, I, I forget who had this idea. In fact, let me check my show notes. Um, somewhere. Uh, uh, uh. Is it Cody? Yeah, yeah, Cody. No name. Cody No Name says, Hi, this is Roy from the HOA. I had a dream you were parking your car in the lawn, and I wanted to make sure you know you can't be doing that. Makes us look like a bunch of hobos. And I did a few of those. I think it might have been on a hobo sode, but maybe it was a real show. I don't remember. I just don't remember. But uh, thanks for showing up, everyone. There's 72 people on the, the thing, the Mix LR. You guys are going to give me ideas of what infractions they could be violating. 22 on the shoutcast. Seems like there's more at nighttime. Yes, Mr. Bray, the, the player on the corner of the page is the live show. Or you can look on the Mixler. And if you want to join the chat room, it's Mixler.com slash phone losers. I don't remember if the Mixler link is still on the live page. If Mixler isn't working out for you, there's always phonelosers.org slash live. So yeah, that's what we're doing tonight. It's not going to be a super long show or anything. I just thought, you know, what the hell? I didn't get a show done earlier today because it was too hot up here. It's been a hot up here for like three or four days now. My air conditioner can't keep up. So fuck it. Doing a live show at night. They forgot to leave the light on. They forgot to leave the light on in the kitchen for me. Nah. People are already thinking I'm doing threats just because I'm calling late. I don't need to let them think I'm coming in their house. Schmanky had a dream that uh, I was doing a live show. And he woke up and checked his phone and holy shit, look at this. I had a dream you ate my sandwich. Yeah, anyway, okay, let's, let's just uh, start calling more people. I might turn the music back on while we wait for people to answer. But I don't know, because she answered, and I had music blaring at her. I'm pretty sure she could hear that. So George and Jane, that's who we're calling. This is a homeowner's list from someone who doesn't want me to say who they are for some reason. He's probably a part of this homeowner's association. Fun Society Arcade wants me to say that my wife is out of town and I really need a sandwich. Can you come and make me one? That sounds hilarious, but sorry, Fun Society Arcade, that's not the theme of tonight's show. The theme of tonight's show is dreams. Dreams about homeowners association violations. The number you have dialed is not in service. Please. All right, Sarlo, that's a good one. I'll... You have reached eight. Hello. Uh, hello? Yes. Hey, it's, it's Roy uh, from the homeowners association. Yes. Um, you weren't sleeping, were you? Well, yeah, it's almost 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm so sorry to call this late. It's just that I was asleep and I was having this dream that, um, do you guys, do you guys have a dog? Sir? Sir? Fuck. <laughs> he had enough of my shit. Let me try him right back. I mean, he's awake already, right? So, I forgot to say his name. I was unprepared for that one. Richard. Yes. Hey, um, do you guys have a dog? Cause I had this dream that your dog was over the weight limit, and that that's against the rules for the with the homeowners association. I'm 
going to turn the phone off. Why? Because you're a fucking asshole. That's. I'm a what? You're a fucking asshole. No, no, I'm not. I, I'm just. I, 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 I. It's turning the phone off, you guys. Got me there. I was going to use Sarla's idea of their dog being too fat. That's against homeowners association rules. Who do they think they are? Yeah, I can call all night. <laughs> you know what? He's going to turn the phone off, but if I were to call back and get his machine, then I could yell through the speaker and be like, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Hello? Hi, uh, Carol? Yeah? It, it's Roy from the Homeowners Association. From who? For, from the Homeowners Association. It's Roy? From the Property Owners Association? Hello? Yeah. It's it's Roy. Are you there, Carol? Right. All right. Um, I, I, I was having a dream that you guys had a dog that was uh, over the weight limit from, you know, hey, hey, Carol. This is going to be tonight's show. Bunch of that. Let's blame Sarlo for that. His dumb idea. Is that the second person that's touch tone to me hello hi james yes hey uh it's roy from the homeowners association roy who yeah from the homeowners association roy who y yes the correct i i'm i'm calling because i i was uh i was sleeping just a little bit ago i just woke up and i was having this dream that you guys had a dog that was over the weight limit and that, that's against the homeowners association Association rules. You know? What the hell is it? It's Roy from the Homeowners Association. We don't have a home association. Well, you have a property owners association. No, we don't. Yes, you do. You're on my list. You do so. Crap. So it's called the Property Owners Association. Same thing, right? Right? Yeah, that's what I thought he said too, Snappy Bakes. We don't have a home. All right, so, um, you know, just in case, because I don't want to keep running into this problem if this is really a thing. Um, give me a few minutes. I'm, I'm going to uh, load up another directory here, one I've been calling a, lo a lot on lately. i got to change my number. I'll be right back. But they're also scary. Like a vagina, that's really hairy. Very cool, like a spritz of Sierra Mist. Like when a phantom spirit gives you a kiss. I'm super serious, super serial. But sometimes things get crazy in a scary world. Like demons and monsters. And headless chickens from fosters. With rotting faces and monster arms. And headless chickens from foster farms. Squawking and laying eggs. Squawking out their necks cause they don't have heads Am I dead? Is this purgatory? Floating like a spirit in this graveyard story The zombie girls are horny, they need fresh wieners Take them to the cleaners, give them Boston steamers Loose in a booth like a loose tooth Sip on Grey Goose and Vermouth Then a phantom ghost gave me a kiss I knelt by her side and made a wish Your wish is granted Through the mist, a creature vanished and vanished all my cool dreams to another universe Six feet under a stream ah! Cool dreams Cool dreams So now we're calling from the directory I think I already did some of these from this directory You know, the dream thing Oh, there we go McScat says I was getting vibes that they were having a bad dream how about I was dreaming that they were having a bad dream? <laughs> oh. Uh, hi. Uh, hey, it's Roy from the Homeowners Association. Is this, is this Mick? Yeah. Hey, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to call so late. I, I, was, uh, I was sleeping just a little bit ago. Uh-huh. And uh, I was having a, a dream that, um, that you were having a, a bad dream. What the hell are you talking about? 
I, I was just having this dream that you were having a bad dream. My dream wasn't a bad dream. My dream was fine. But I was just worried about you because a lot of my dreams end up coming true. And I thought maybe you're having a bad dream. So I thought if I called you, it would wake you up and your bad dream would be over. Did it work? Uh, no, dude. You just woke me up. What were you dreaming about? Mick? Mick? <laughs> that was McScat's idea. Getting vibes that they were having a bad dream. <laughs> the HOA doesn't allow dreams. Hello. Hello, John? Who is this? Uh, it's Steve Day from the Homeowners Association. Steve what? Steve Day from the Homeowners Association. What the hell are you doing calling at this time? I'm I'm so sorry to call this late. I'm I'm really sorry. I don't, I usually wouldn't call this late. I I just um I I had a dream that uh you guys were like uh drawing on the sidewalk with chalk and and that's against the HOA rules. We haven't you, been drawing anywhere on any kind of sidewalk anywhere. Are you sure? Cuz I was having a dream about it and and that's against the rules. Oh. <laughs> oh, what's that? What's that noise? What was that little chirp thing? Was that the traceback machine? I think he activated the traceback machine. Ah, oh, should I call back? I I don't know. I don't. I don't. He's already given us so much. Why bother him anymore? Hey. Hey, listen. If I see if I see. Hey, stick it up your ass, but asshole. But look, if I see chalk on the sidewalk tomorrow. Sir? Okay, he's gone. Did I talk over him? I don't know if I did. So I can't say I'm Roy with this homeowners association because they've all been warned about Roy. They've sent out an email to these people. <laughs> that was Cody No Name's idea. Sidewalk chalk. Thanks, Cody No Name. Hello. Hi, uh, Scott? Yeah. Hey, it's Roy from the... Oh, crud, I didn't mean to say that. It's Roy from the Homeowners Association. Uh-huh. I'm just calling to apologize for calling so late. Okay. So, sorry about that. Okay, what can I do for you? Oh, th that's it. I just wanted to apologize for calling so late. Okay, thank you. I I'm very sorry. I don't usually call this late, but I just had to call and say that I'm sorry. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, do, do, do you accept my apology, though? Yeah, sure. Because I'm just really sorry. I, I shouldn't be calling this late, and, and, you know... What's the reason for your call? I, I'm calling to apologize. Okay, thanks. Okay, well, why are you being like that about it? So Bob Murphy suggested that. He, he completely ignored the uh, format of today's show and made that kind of a suggestion. I just could not do that one. Come on. He sounded awake. I don't think I woke him up. Hello. Hi, uh, Stacy. This is Jama. Oh, Jama, I'm sorry. Th this is Steve Dave from the Homeowners Association. Yes. Um, I I didn't even have your number before, but I was having a dream that this was your phone number, and so I called it just to see if I was right, if my dream was true, and and so really, this is Stacy and Jama. <laughs> She's not going to confirm it. Damn it. It says Stacy and Jamma on here, so I figured she would be the Stacy and the Mr. would be the Jamma. But this is one of those new millennial couples, I think. They're both, they're both females. They're one of those gays. I mean, yeah, I guess Stacy's a male's name too, right? That was Hebrew Hamster's idea. It didn't work out, Hebrew Hamster. I tried. I mean, I guess I could call that other list, and I don't have to be with the HOA. I can just be their neighbor, Roy, and saying, hey, I was having a dream about you. Thank God you answered. Hello? Hi. Uh, hey, it, it's, it's Steve Dave. Is this Cindy? Cindy, uh, hey, I'm from the Homeowners Association. Yeah. 
and I, I had this. I was having a dream. I just woke up. I was having having a dream that you forgot to to bring your garbage cans inside. Okay, thank you. Like, were, did you? Did you bring them inside? I did. Are you sure? Because I, I was having a dream and it was really realistic. It was very vivid. Aww. She did bring her trash cans inside. She won that one. Thanks for that idea, Grumpy Dumper. I think I'll try that one more time, though. All right, next page. This page is going to be awesome. And then after I finish this page, I'm going to go back to that other directory, and I'm just going to call his neighbors. That's what I'm going to do. That'll teach him. That'll fool him a good one. Hello? Hello, Beatrice? Yeah. Hey, it's uh, Steve Dave from the Homeowners Association. Are you kidding me? Do you know what time it is? I know. I'm so sorry to call so late. I'm really sorry. Beatrice? Beatrice? Oh, come on. <laughs> See, like the entire home, the, like this entire neighborhood has been warned about me. So she probably thought, like, like as soon as she heard HOA, did I say Roy? Crap, did I say Roy? Uh, now, now it's busy. Did I say Roy, you guys? That was an accident if I said Roy. I can't say Roy on this one. They've been warned about Roy. But they've also been warned that someone's impersonating the HOA. Okay, I said Steve Dave. Good. Thanks, Dwight and Neon. I had, a dr I had a dream that I said Roy. So I think she just knew that it was a prank as soon as I said that. So 98 people are listening. How many of you uh, have work in the morning? <laughs> I'm keeping you up. You're going to feel like shit tomorrow. And the calls aren't even working out. Nothing's really happening. Sucks to be you in the morning. Only about 10 left on this page. And then we're done with this, this directory for now. I think I need to throw this directory away. <laughs> this is one that Joey sent me. Thanks, Joey. But they're on to my tricks. Hello? Hi, uh, Paula? Yeah? It's Steve Dave from the Homeowners Association. At 2 o'clock? Yes, I'm so sorry to call this late. Um, I, was, I was sleeping and I had a dream that you asked me to call you. Okay, you're a weirdo. Why do you say that? Steve who? Steve Dave from the Homeowners Association. Hey, you tell that guy to be quiet in the background. Jeffrey? Ma'am? Nope. Guess not. Did you guys hear the husband in the background? I can't hang up on that guy. Yeah. I, I really like one, two, three, seven. Seven left on this page. Just seven. And then this one's over. I am done with that directory. Possibly forever. Thanks for sending it in, Joey, though. It was, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun with it. So much fun that they've been warned. Multiple times, I think. They're getting emails about me. The number you have dialed is not in service. Please check the number and try again. Neon wants me to say I was having dreams about new Slurpee flavors. That sounds fun. How about I had a dream that the new Captain Crunch Slurpee, which is a real thing by the way, actually tasted like Frosted Flakes. I make them go check. That's what I should do. Hi. Uh, Judy? Yes. Hey, it's it's uh, your neighbor. It's Dale. I, I lived kind of down the street over on Marshview. Okay. Um, I'm so sorry to call so late. That's okay. It, I, I, it's all right. Okay. Um, it's just that I was, uh, I was asleep just a few minutes ago. And yes. I, I was having a very vivid dream that you asked me to call you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, what did you want? I, I don't know. I was not anything that I know of. I, I don't. I'm not even sure which one you are. Oh, it's Dale. I live just, uh, you know, just kind of around the corner over in Marshview. What's your last name? Burns. What? Burns. Duns. Yeah, Duns. Do you know my husband? No. Well, I know. I know both of you. I, I always, you know, I, I always wave when I drive by. I know both you and Al. It's just okay. A, I, I, was I, just, I just I can't 
I, I can't make the connections. I'm uh-huh. sorry. Well, I mean, were you wanting me to call you, though? No, sir, not that I know of. Because I was having a dream that you were. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, is Al there? I can, maybe Al was wanting me to call him. Uh, he's, he's asleep. I, oh, it's okay. You can wake him. Uh, it'll take just a few minutes. Okay. okay. Ask him what he was dreaming about. All right. The other room? Ma'am? Just a moment. Oh, jeez, that was loud. What did you say? Oh, I just, I, the, the phone was really loud. I, I accidentally turned it up all the way. It scared me. I was dozing off. And like when, okay. when you said just a moment, I, it jolted me awake. What's the music? Uh, Al's sleeping yeah. on the couch tonight. Yeah, yeah, so I won't speak to you. I can answer the phone. Well, just a moment. Okay. Was that the toilet? Hello. Oh, hello, Al. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, Dale from uh, down, you know, I'm, I'm your neighbor down the street. Yeah, where are you? Uh, just down the street a bit over on Marshview. Hey, uh, I was asleep a few minutes ago. You what? I, I was asleep. I just woke up. Yeah. And I was having a dream that you needed me to call you. Huh. Like, what, what did you want? Nothing. I don't know what the dream was, buddy. I don't know. Huh. I didn't want anything. Well, why why did you want me to call you if you didn't need anything? I didn't want you to call me. Who told you you had a dream that I? No, I I was asleep and I just woke up, and in yeah. my in my dream you really needed me to call you, so I'm just trying to figure out why. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> well, I mean, why did you want me to call you then? Like like this this is just. I a want way... you to call me. That's your dream. How well you dreamed it? I didn't dream it. <laughs> Well, yeah, but you, like, why would I dream that you wanted me to call you? I don't know. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, it seems like a waste of both of our times. I was trying yeah. to, I was trying I, to sleep. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Something there's just confusion there, buddy. I was, I was sleeping, and then I heard the phone ring, and I said, "Who in the world's calling?" Oh, were you in the bathroom? Pardon me. Were you in the bathroom just now? Yeah, I just came to went to the bathroom oh, after. I thought I yeah, I thought I heard the toilet flush. Yeah. Okay. It seems like you could um, raise the uh, the plunger thing, like inside the toilet bowl. Like it, you, you don't have a lot of water flow. Like, do you have a one point six gallon tank? No, no, no. I, I got to go back to sleep, buddy. Okay. Well, what did you want, though? I don't want anything. Then why why do you want me to call you? Sir, we got to go. Thank you very much for calling. Ma'am, ma'am, this is between me and Al. Hello, Al. Al. Thought they were picking back up. Well, that was amusing, I guess, wasn't it? Is it 1.6 gallons? That that's not enough. What what's the the flush rate? Oh no, that that is. It's like 1.6 gallons per per second. How do toilets work, everyone? I was very disappointed in in the sound of their uh, toilet flow. You know, when they flushed, it didn't sound very energy efficient to me. That was Smith Wesson's idea. Thanks, Smith Wesson. What do you want? Oh hey, it's it's your neighbor. It's Dale. Yeah. Hey, um, I had I had a dream. I was just sleeping, and I just woke up. I had a dream that your toilet wasn't flushing right. Are you kidding me? No, like um, like you you had it set too high, so it wasn't like it it was just beyond the threshold of being not energy e- efficient. You gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Man, what a dumb idea that was, Mr. Mr. Something Something Google. Hello. Hi, uh, Libby. Uh-huh. It's it's your neighbor, Dale. Uh-huh. I, I'm really sorry to be calling so late. I, I was just, um, I was sleeping just a few minutes ago, and I just woke up. I was having a dream that you weren't going to answer your phone. 
Uh-huh. So I was, I was calling to make sure. Okay. And you, which neighbor? Uh, I live over on North Court. Okay. You, you know where that is? No. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just a, a few blocks away. I, I always wave to you when, when, when I drive by. You and, okay. You and Ray. But yeah, I was just having a dream that, um, like, I, I, when I called you, you didn't pick up the phone. Oh. <laughs> but it's weird. Then you did. Like, I was gonna call just to see if you would or not. Yeah. Thank you. But you did. But what are you doing, Libby? Uh huh. What, what are you doing right now? Well, I think I need to go now. Where, where are you going? What are you doing? Libby. Yes. Is Ray there? Yes. Can I talk to Ray? All right, this man is named Dale. What's with Hey. Hi, uh, Ray? Yeah. It, it's Dale. I, I'm your neighbor. I just I, I live a few blocks away. I, I yeah. Know. Um, I was uh, I would I just woke up. I was having a dream that when I called you guys, you weren't answering your phone. Uh-huh. So then I called and and Libby did answer after all. It was the darndest thing. What what is that telling me? What? What what does that mean to me? What does it mean to you? Yeah, I mean I don't understand. Oh, I just I didn't think you guys would answer because in my dream you weren't answering. I was calling over and over and over. No, and, oh, okay. And every time I ca- called yeah. I kept getting your machine. Oh, we're here. But, like, then I called, and, and, like, she picked up on the second ring. There there was, like, she just picked up right away. But we're here. Okay, yeah. yeah I guess, uh, I don't know. Usually my dreams are pretty vivid, and they always come true. Yeah. But uh, not this one. You, you guys picked up right away. Great. That's wonderful. Now, where did you live at, Dale? I'm over on North Court. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know where that is, right? Not really. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, North Court? It's by Clubhouse Drive? Or, I mean, it's, yeah. not, it's, it's like way down the street, though. Okay. Way down the street. All right. Well, appreciate your concern. Oh, no, I wasn't concerned. I just I didn't think you guys would answer. Oh, okay. Um, were you asleep? Yeah, it's 2.26 in the morning. Yep. What were you dreaming about? I wasn't dreaming. Well, no, you had to have been, like, at some point, because you've been asleep for a few hours. Like, like what, what was your dream about? It's okay, don't be embarrassed. Uh, you got me confused. With, uh, I, don't, I don't understand what's going on. I, I'm just wondering what your dream was about. What were you dreaming about? I don't, I don't, um, I wasn't dreaming, sir. Was Libby dreaming? I don't know whether Libby was dreaming or not, but this is a weird phone call to be bothering me at 2.30 in the morning. Can can you ask her uh, real quick? Because I'm just wondering, like, because maybe we're having the same dream. Maybe that's why why she picked up. No, uh, um, no, I'm not going to ask her about what she's dreaming. Okay. uh, Hey, hey, I don't want to be rude, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hang up now. Okay, but w- one second though, Ray. Yeah. Can you read me a bedtime story? No. Please. Just a short one. Please. What kind of story? Or, or any story, like a bedtime story, or. Or sing me a lullaby. No. Please? No. I, no. I'm going to have a hard time getting back to sleep. <laughs> Let's see. Um, whose idea was that? I need to delete it. Oh, Hebrew Hamster. Wanted me to say that about them not answering their phone. 30 minutes, you guys. There's no way I'm going past midnight. And midnight is in 33 minutes. The show is nearly over. Sorry. 
There's a few good calls though, right? It wasn't a total waste of a night. So this is the directory that is a property owners association. After the tone. <sighs> yep, 32 minutes till the XYZ show, everyone. Hi, uh, Francis. Yeah. Hi, it, it's 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 your neighbor, Roy. It, is uh is Clark there? Yeah. Could I talk to him? Well, I'll have to get him. Hang on. Okay. Now wait a minute. Our neighbor, who? Uh, Roy. I live over on Lakeview. I was I was um I was sleeping, like I just woke up. And I was having this dream that uh, Clark was making fun of my nose. So I, I just want to get him to apologize real quick. Well, that's not necessary. I'll tell him you called rather, uh, rather than waking him up. I know, but I can't, I'm not going to be able to fall asleep unless I get an apology. Okay. I'll have to get him up. This All right. Moment. Thank you so much. Man, they have a big house. Oh. Hello, Clark? Yeah? It's your neighbor, Roy. I, I live over there on uh, Lakeview. Yeah. Y you know me, right? Uh, you're my neighbor. Huh? What? Well, I thought it was my son. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm your neighbor. Um, I was asleep just a few minutes ago, and, and uh, I, was having, I just woke up. I was having a dream that you were making fun of me. Like you're making fun of my nose, so I was hoping you could apologize. Yeah, I don't know. Like, just, just please, can you apologize so I can get back to sleep? Apologize for what? Oh, you were making fun of my nose in my dream. Oh boy, I apologize. You do? I guess. Okay, because, like, why were you making fun of my nose? That was mean. Like, I, I used to get that all the time back in school, but, and, but you know, people are pretty nice about it these days. Like, you're, you're too old to be making fun of my nose like that. Come on. But, I mean, I appreciate the apology. What, what do you want me to do? Oh, I, I was just wanting you to apologize, and, and, you know, you apologize, so thank you so much. Okay. I, I was just saying it wasn't a nice thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're, you're better than that. You know? Okay. I don't, I don't quite understand what's going on. It's okay. It's you know what? Uh, this is his wife. Oh, hey, Francis. you realize what time it is? Uh, two... Do you realize? His age what, and my age. What what time is it? Well, it's a quarter to three. Thank you. Um, yeah, I know. I'm sorry to be calling so late. It's just that you know I was having that dream, and Clark was making fun of my nose, and I just you know just needed an apology. That's all. Francis. Clark. Hello? Your wife needs to apologize to me for yelling at me. Okay. Jeez. I, I, I'm sorry. No, it, now, it, please go to sleep. Who, me? Please go to sleep. Oh, I am. I'm going to go back to sleep. It's just, you know, you were yelling at me, and, and before that, Clark was making fun of my nose. I don't understand. I, it was just a bad dream, that's all. I, I was what? just I was just having a bad dream. We'll go back to sleep. Okay, I'm I'm going to. I'm gonna hang up and go back to sleep. Okay. Good night. Are you going are you going to also? Pleasant dreams. Okay, thank you so much. Good night, Francis. Bye. Bye. I didn't know she was still there listening. Uh who told me to say that? Uh, Christopotamus said to, uh, you know, say that she needed to apologize for yelling at me. So thank you, Christopotamus. I, I, that made me get a, an apology out of both of them, both Clark and Francis. 
Oh, and that was an idea by uh, Jarrett Reynolds. Thank you, Jarrett Reynolds. Making fun of my nose idea. It brought back horrible memories of, of middle school. Thanks for that. I have something to tell you all. Guess what? Guess what? I'm not really doing a show. This is a dream. You're only dreaming. It's all an elaborate dream. This is Mr. Biggs. This episode of the Snowplow Show is brought to you by Powder Milk Biscuits, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Corporation for Public Phone Pranking, and from listeners like you. Yeah, after the show, let's all play hello? GTA. Oh, hello, uh, Linda. Linda, yes? it's Roy. It's your neighbor, Roy. Roy. Yeah, I live down the street. I'm over on Lakeview. Okay. Um, I I was uh, I I was sleeping just a few minutes ago. I just woke up, and I had a dream that you were sleepwalking, and I just wanted to wake you up so you didn't sleepwalk. <laughs> what, Linda? Come on. Not even a not even a thank you. I think that was food stamp tacos idea, but I'm not sure. He said something about sleepwalking. Hello. Hi, uh, David. Uh, yes. Uh, it's Roy. Uh, it's Roy, your neighbor, Roy. Yes. I, I live over on Lakeview. Yes. Hey, uh, I I um I had a dream that you guys forgot to. I I was I just woke up. I I was having this bad dream that you guys left your trash cans out. After, you know, it's not even trash day. Say that again. Okay, I was having a bad dream that you left your trash cans out, out on the street. And it wasn't, oh. e and it wasn't even trash day. Like, you brought them out on the wrong night. Did, did you accidentally put your trash cans out? No, I don't have trash cans. Oh, uh, what do you have? Um, my wife, uh... Uh, maybe she does. I don't know. I I don't mm. do that part of it. Okay, and then I was having this other dream that you were uh, sleepwalking. Oh, well, God. Uh, and I, I just, I, I wanted to uh, call and wake you up before you started sleepwalking. Well, Larry, I don't know. <laughs> huh? What? I, I don't, uh, I don't sleepwalk. Oh, are you sure? Because, I mean, you'd be asleep while you were doing it, so, like, you wouldn't know. Well, I don't know where you're going, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I, I just, I was asleep. Um, were you asleep? Ah, uh, yes. What were you dreaming about? Beautiful women. Really? Like, how many? What, what, how old were they? I don't know, Larry. I don't know where this is going, so I'm going to go back to sleep. Okay. Are you going to dream about more beautiful women? Yeah. Okay. I, I hope they're good dreams. All right. I Thank you. I hope you get some. Bye. Bye. Good night. That is the weirdest fucking call Who I've ever had. Our neighbor, he said, Larry, did you leave your garbage cans outside? Do you walk in your sleep? Our Are neighbor, you walking in your sleep now? Our neighbor? He said he was. Aw. I thought we were going to get to hear the whole thing. That was pretty great, though. Oh, man. Okay. Um... Yeah, somebody in chat said we're getting tons more answers now. And it's true, we are. I need to uh, use this directory more often. Use it all up. And I didn't say Larry, did I? I thought I said Roy. He, he kept calling me Larry. I think I'm going to be Larry the rest of the night. I mean, for the next 15 minutes. Just call me Larry. So here's an idea from they liked it. They really liked it. You're yeah. not available now. Please leave your name and phone. I had a dream you were about to pee the bed. So I called to wake you up before you peed the bed. Before your sheets got wet, he said. I like that one. 
That guy's gonna call up Larry in the morning. I'm like, did you call me? What the hell, Larry? Hello. Oh, hey, uh, Carlton. Yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, Larry. I'm your neighbor. I, I, it's Larry. I live over on Lakeview. I'm your neighbor. Yeah. I I was just uh, I was asleep, and I just woke up, and I I had a dream that your refrigerator was one running. I, I just wanted to uh, call you up and tell you to go catch it. Raymond? I mean, Carlton? Carlton? That was United Nations' fault. He completely ruined that call. I bet you that would have been the best call of the night. Carlton had to... I mean, United whatever. I, I don't even know. United Nations. Messed that one up. I was going to say something completely different. That came up in the chat room just as he picked up. Thanks a lot. I'm, somebody kick him from the chat room, please. I don't need this shit right now. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, Gene? Gene? It, it's it's your neighbor, Larry. Uh, neighbor who? Larry. Larry. Yeah, is is Ben around? Um. Yeah, he's asleep. Oh man, um. I was I was just sleeping too. I just woke up. I'm sorry to call so late. Okay, maybe it, tomorrow. Well, okay. no, it's like I was having a dream that you guys were uh, calling me to. To ask if I'd come and play basketball with you. Oh my! <laughs> and um, I just wanted to see if that was a real thing. Like, if you really wanted to tomorrow, maybe. Okay. Wow, Gene, Gene, come on! That hurt. Fuck! That was McScat's idea. It didn't work, McScat. Only 13 minutes of show left, McScat. You give me ideas like that. Hello, we are not available now. Please leave your... Hello? Hi, uh, Linda? Yeah? Oh, that, that was weird. I was... I'm so sorry. Th this is your neighbor, Roy? Uh-huh. And I was sleepwalking, and I dialed your number in my sleep. This is my uh, neighbor? Yeah, your neighbor, Roy. I'm sorry, I don't think I know you. Oh, I live over on uh, Lakeview. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, I was I was just sleepwalking. I I dialed your number and I just woke up right as you picked up. Okay. So well, uh, I'm, I'm have a good night. I'm sorry to call so late. That's okay. Bye bye. Were you asleep? <laughs> that was Bray's idea. Didn't work out. She wasn't interested. I don't think she believed me. Darn it, Bray. Uh, I dreamt you were tongue punching my dog's fart box. That's from Smith Wesson, who is still calling me. And, like, at this point, I'm just not answering out of spite. Um, trash cans, HOA, sleepwalking race. That's tempting. Basketball, pee the bed. How about the pee the bed idea? That sounds funny. We only have nine minutes, though. I kind of wanted to do that 7-Eleven idea. Or their Captain Crunch Slurpees tasted like Frosted Flakes. Hello? Hi, Carolyn? Yes. Is Clinton around? Who's calling? Uh, it's your neighbor, Larry. Who? Larry, your neighbor. Larry? Yeah, I live over on Lakeview. You, you guys know me. Where are you located? Over on Lakeview. Why do you need to call Clint? He's asleep. I know. I was just I, I was I was asleep too. I just woke up, and I was having a dream that um, he was gonna he was gonna pee the bed, and I wanted to wake him up before he peed the bed. You're crazy. No, I'm not. Like, can you can you wake him up and tell him to go use the bathroom? No, he's fine. But you don't like. You're gonna feel pretty silly if he wets the bed. What is your last name? Davis. You're Larry Davis. Do we know you? Yeah, I, I live over on Lakeview. I always wave at you guys when I drive by. 
Okay, that's and nice. But don't call us in the middle of the night. We're okay, fine. But I was asleep. Like, I'm sorry to call so late. Carolyn? Aw. Come on, Carolyn. Yeah, I know. United Nations. He's going to pee the bed. She's going to feel so silly. She's going to be like, I should have listened. Next time Larry calls in the middle of the night, I'll listen to him. Hello? Hello, Richard? Yes, it is. It, it's Roy, um, your neighbor? Yeah. Hey, uh, I was asleep just a minute ago, and uh, I was having a dream that you were making fun of my... You, you were making fun of me? Like you were saying things about my nose? Pardon me? I, I, was, uh, I just woke up. I was asleep, and I was having a dream that you were making fun of my nose, and I just wanted to call and ask for an apology. You, why don't you give me a favor? Go back to bed. Well, no, not until I get an apology. I can't sleep without an apology. You won't get one either. Why not? Have a nice day. You're being kind of a dick, sir. You know what? Do me a favor. What? Bye. That's not a favor. <laughs> it's a pretty easy favor, really. <laughs> oh, there he goes. I think that's as good of a place as any to end tonight's show. I think I did all the ideas for the most part. Um... I didn't do the tongue punchy my fart box idea. I didn't call anyone up and just say, I had a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Kind of wanted to do that. That was from uh, Super Phone Brothers. King Richard wanted me to uh, say that I dream that I work for the HOA, and now I'm going to apply, and this call is a practice for the interview. But that's when we were doing HOA calls. I think we definitely have to do this again, though. We have to just do this whole dream idea. Do another nighttime show of dreams. Like, how many pages do I have here? I could probably... Holy shit, yeah, this is a large directory. So thank you for listening, everyone. Let's see. Um, let, me, let me do some Googling here before we get going. Um, um, how about this one? You know, since since tonight's uh, since tonight's show is all about dreams and stuff, I want you all to get in bed, pull the covers up real tight. I'm going to read you a bedtime story. This one's called "I Will Help You." It's from Storyberries.com, and it's a story about when Mama Heron needs help, Lungile comes to her rescue. <laughs> What the fuck? Ouch! Mama Heron hurt her wing and leg on a barbed wire. Oh, no. Mama Heron is a, 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 a goose? Or what's those things with the big legs? Is it a stork? No, it's not a stork. Maybe it's a stork. It's got the big legs. It's a bird, okay? I am hurt. I can't get home to my children. And then these uh, four people are in are in a van driving by the pond. No, it's not erotic fanfic. Fic, I'm sorry. Please help me, the bird yells to the school bus. Oh, wait, no. The people in the van were ignoring, ignoring the bird that had his leg trapped in barbed wire. People on the bus are ignoring, too. It's a school bus filled with children. They're completely ignoring this bird. Kid on a bike. Doing the same thing, ignoring him. Why are you crying, Mama Heron? Heron, whatever. And it's a little boy walking up. He says, and Mama Heron says, I can't get home to my children. And Mama Heron's crying. She's out of the water. Matt92 says to put that bird out of its misery. I will help you, says Lungile. Lungile just happens to be carrying this weird wooden cart thing with wheels on it with with a rope because that's what kids drag around when they're walking around the neighborhood by themselves puts the bird on it and the bird sits on this is a horrible story thank you Lung Lungile Lungile the next day Gogo sends Lungile to the shop to buy bread on the way he stops to play with his friends in the river they're all naked in the river you guys I think I think this story is from a third world country, to be honest. Yeesh, the money is gone. Lungaya looks sad. Don't come home until you find that money. 
You guys don't fall asleep yet. Like this is I'm pretty sure this is where it's ramping up. Uh that that was the mom. Uh, very angry, holding a broom, yelling at him about the money, yelling, yelling at Lungile. Why are you crying, Lungile? Bird flies down. This is a very confusing story. I lost the money Gogo gave me to buy bread. We have no supper now. <laughs> I will help you, says the the mama heron. And Lungile puts his arms out like, yay. Yeah, weird Chinese fable. That could be it. Mama Heron, sharp eyes. See the coins shining in the water. Thank you, Mama Heron. The end. The, the bird, Mama Heron, helped him find the coins. He lost them in the water while he was, you know, getting the barbed wire off of the bird. You know, He didn't even show him getting the barbed wire off. He just put him on this cart. And, and rolled him up the hill and and next thing you know he's fine like we didn't see it happen we take him to the vet or something anyway um 83 listeners looks like a few of you have fallen asleep and that's the end of tonight's show thanks for listening everyone sweet dreams close your eyes i want to ride the skies in my sweet Hey, RBCP. This is Mr. Tomato Head. Hello. Hey, listen, I had to call you. Listen. You have a chance to be a part of history. Okay. The last blockbuster in history ah, this is again. in existence. You know how and many times this has been emailed ben to me? Oregon. Uh, Brad, if you missed the chance to do something with this and uh, you... You just missed it all. It's like two and a half hours away. In Oregon, you might even take a little field trip over there, you know, sit down, have a picnic with them or a celebration in the store. I've said goodbye to Blockbuster so many times. Remember the goodbye to Blockbuster snowplow show where we tapped into their conference and closed down some of their stores early. That was fun, wasn't it? Wasn't that a good enough goodbye? And just last year, I took a road trip. It was about two hours away. I went to one of the very last blockbusters still in existence last year. It was up near Portland, Oregon, I think east of Portland, Oregon. I forget which city it was in, but I went there and I bought a copy of Jerry Maguire on DVD because they didn't have it on VHS. That was my very last video store trip. And now what do you know? There's another one that's about the same distance away from me. This time it's the last one in America, but it's not closing down, is it? Like, they're still running it. They don't plan to close it down, I don't think. So, Brad, please do it. I'm begging you. No. Love you. Maybe. Maybe if they decide to close down in another year or two, I'll run out there and take advantage of their end-of-days sales. But for now, I am done saying my goodbyes to Blockbuster. I've said them plenty of times. More times than I've said goodbye to Radio Shack, another company that's just taking forever to die. And if you don't know, I guess the story is that the uh, the last blockbusters in Alaska are getting ready to close down or have just closed down. So the very last blockbuster in all of America now is in Bend, Oregon, just a little over two hours from my house. I don't see myself going there, though. Not soon, anyway. Maybe, maybe sometime in the future, if it's still there. Hello, Brad. It's Mr. Pickle. Regarding the shout-out the other day on the show about... Uh my video of the train passing through the neighborhood. Uh, it was quite nice, but I was a little bit disappointed that the school band did not, in fact, show up to meet the train and play for us. Oh, I think they probably okay. actually did show up. It took uh, me a second to realize what you're talking about. This guy thinks he's special because he was on a train that passed through Albany, Oregon. Uh, however, we were an hour and a half late just coming from Portland, so they probably just gave up. And that retired. train is always late. Both ways, it's always late. It's never on time. To the ice cream shop, the Tasty Freeze up the street. Anyway, I missed out on all the epic uh, shows yesterday, the, the Asterio show and uh, the Carlito and, uh, yep. and the Jayad release and whatever else may have allegedly happened. What the fuck happened to COMC? I don't know. Uh, Nobody I think knows. got raided by the FBI or something. Still, I don't know. Still works for me. The internet's going through those two. You, you probably just got banned, that's all. But, uh, and uh, at Milkman, uh, I hope he's still alive. I missed the, the live show. I look forward to Carlito putting it out. Yep, uh, yep. He I was would like on to there. go to San Francisco sometime and just have me, uh, have him drive me around on <sighs> those 
self-driving cars. Yeah, have him has. drive you in a self-driving car. All right, that's enough of your minute and 22 second long voicemail. Thanks for calling in, pickle person. Hey, Roy, it's me, Gary Busey. Hello. Redbeard's son. Hey. <clears throat> we're, uh, we're on vacation. I'm sorry I haven't called you in a while. I know right. I say that every time, but it's because I haven't called you in a while. Yep. We're on vacation I, I sure at an undisclosed beach. And we're having a good time. And, uh... Yeah, okay, bye. Hey, Brad. It's some guy 609. Hey. Um, just driving around, and I had an idea. I saw a psychic. He's got a phone number on the sign. No I shit. thought, wouldn't it be funny if you call up the psychic, don't identify yourself, just call up the psychic, and, and say, who am I? start effing with them. And then when they ask, who's this? Just say, you don't know, you're a psychic. You're supposed to know. That's right. And see what they say. All right, pal. That's what I'll do. One. Thanks. You know, I, I used to call them back in the 90s for free using the magic of phone fraud. I would call up psychics and get free psychic readings, and they never seemed to know that I was calling up for free, that I was totally screwing them over, and the charges would probably get reversed eventually. They didn't see that coming for some reason. It was the darndest thing. Hey, it's Sen. It's so this guys. is my epic voice, man. I accidentally turned down the volume on that. Uh, Ruprecht the Monkey Boy. Rupert the Mega Boy here. You, you know that boy. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what this is for 2 minutes and 12 seconds. Did you not hear the message on the voicemail that said, please keep your messages under 30 seconds? And weirdly enough, here you are with a, a 2 minute and 12 second voicemail. Well, that you always Mr. hear Crimson. over and over again. Well, a big shout out to Rupert the Monkey Boy because yep. a lot of people might not realize, just like I didn't Ten, realize for nine, a very long time, eight, that Rupert seven, is a very... Six, uh, Five, unique four, voicemail caller. Three, two, uh, that's because one, Ruprecht zero. is actually originally a car dean victim. You've had your 30 right, seconds. He discovered, this, <laughs> he discovered this show because someone left a car dean note on his car here in North Carolina. You don't and, say. Uh, I, and, uh, that's if crazy. You know, please, go to the episode. It's called 24th of Dean Timber, and it's on the 24th of September 2015. And you go to 46 minutes and 20 seconds in. Okay. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to stop your voicemail. And I'm going to go here where Ruprecht is a carding victim. Because I don't know if I knew that or not. I don't think I knew that. He probably told me that, but I don't remember anything. What about that? All right, here we that go. idea was by Ben. 46 minutes and 20 seconds. Just like pretty much every other idea. Almost there. Is. Thanks, Ben. Here's a couple messages from a guy. Uh, one was two days ago, and one was yesterday. Hey, Roy, this is Art. Uh, oh, shit. I think we just doxed Ruprecht. I you leaving that. I uh, need to talk with you. Uh, the only time you can be able to get a hold of me, though, is in the uh, afternoon. I'm not sure about this uh, Air 2 or 2 uh, It's better be and, funny. Uh, I really don't see no issues, but... Uh, Give me a call and get Aw, Ruprecht's a nice guy. He's a nice right, carding victim. Number one from two days ago. Here's message number two. He's not trying Roy, to scam his insurance call company. Call number two. Uh, that's the message for you, I believe. Uh, type four S. We should wait to hear back from you. That's a note on my car. Uh, then, uh, somebody way I parked and tanked or whatever. Uh, He's probably not a carding victim. He, he's probably just a listener. He's like, oh, I'm going to fool him. Thank you. All right, I'm going to pretend to be a carding victim. Answers. This one's from North Carolina, so thank you, North Carolina people. Hello? Hey there, it's Roy. I left a note on your car a couple days ago. Yeah, well, hey, how you doing? Not too bad. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was just looking. I, I really can't see nothing, uh... You know, going on with it, maybe besides maybe the front right bumper. Oh, Rupert! Uh, oh no! But, uh, it, it was the hood. I was on on the hood, was eating my sandwich. What were you doing there? Uh, I I'm in a first aid class, and I was practicing with my CPR dummy on the hood of your car, and you know I was doing the chest compressions, and I guess I got carried away because it, it dented, it pushed down on your hood too much. Oh, okay. So. uh well, I, I'm, I'm in my truck right now. I don't see any uh, dents or anything. Oh, maybe it popped back out. But yeah, oh, I, hold I, on I, a second. Okay. 
And you said you were doing CPR on a dummy on my truck? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was practicing to be CPR certified. This has got to be a joke, prank call or something. Oh, man. What? Why would you say that? You figured it out. <laughs> so you, you just picked my truck out of the... There was the I'm waiting for a punchline or something. I know you're joking with me. No, I'm not joking. I wouldn't joke about CPR. I'm, I'm, next week I'm gonna hopefully be CPR certified, and I might save your life one day. So, so would you pop the den out yourself or what? No, I think maybe it just popped itself out. You know, it was just a temporary thing and just popped back out. Yeah, I was just I was doing the chest compressions and I just got carried away with those. If it was a real person, I probably would have crushed their rib cage. But Roy, the only thing is, I was only out my truck for like five, probably five minutes. Oh. So you had to see me get out my truck and ran straight to it. No, no, it was just I was just casually walking by and just you know started okay. started practicing. Okay, well, I, if I don't see, I don't see nothing wrong with it, so it shouldn't be no big thing. Okay, that's good. I'm glad it popped back out. Yeah. All right, then, Roy, I appreciate it. Okay, well, you have a nice day. All right. Motherfucker. Yeah. All right. God damn it. Do what? He, I said motherfucker. Hey, come over here and call me that. Oh. Son of a bitch. Oh, hey, fuck you, pal. Who do you think you are talking to me like that? I ain't your goddamn pal. Oh, shut up, bud. Oh, yeah? That's right. Oh, we're bu- so we're not pals. We're buds, huh? Oh, I'm not your bud. I'll stop a goddamn mud hole through your ass. Oh, just like Curtis Lee Jones. See, we'll see about damn that. Right. See, he's we'll a see listener. He's totally a listener. You just wait to the end of the conversation and start talking shit. Well, I'm about to get off the phone. Well, maybe I wouldn't have. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm in the same. I'm in the same parking lot I was when you left that note. Well, it's you. You, you had to have such an attitude. So fuck you. I was well, just. Okay, well, how, how long before you can get down here? I was just trying to do the right thing and leave a note, you dick face. <laughs> okay, well, you come on here and show me how I'm a dick face then. I'm, okay. I'm the same parking lot. On I'll, I'll come over there and do CPR on your ass. Well, how, how long will it take before you get down here? Do some CPR on me. I can be there, in, I can be there in 10 minutes, motherfucker. That's about all I got. So I got means I got eleven minutes. Ten to wait for you and one to whip your ass. No, you're not gonna whip anyone's ass, you fucking pussy. We'll see about it. Oh yeah, we will. You wait right there. Yeah, you better bring a damn army for me. Yeah. You done shit in your mess kit now. I, I shit my what? I said you done shit in your damn mess kit now, you son of a bitch. Oh my mess kit. Okay. That was a good one. All right, bring, bring your ass on. All right, I'll yeah, see. Yeah, bring the drum rolls. Bring, bring everything on. I'm gonna wait for you ten minutes now. All right, you'll, you'll see what happens when I get there. Okay, I'm by myself. I'm by myself. So am uh, I, motherfucker. Call me a dumbass. We're gonna have a fucking okay. duel. A duel. That's Is that right. A threat? No, you're the one threatening me. I, I didn't say nothing about a weapon. I didn't say I ain't had no. I ain't oh no, no, we're gonna, no weapon. Me either. No, we're gonna duel with our fists. Well, bring your ass on. It should be eight minutes away by now, right? Yeah, I'm almost there. Oh god, you just wait. Okay, well, let uh, let me know when it's let me know when forever. the faggot pulls up. Oh, he's already there because you're the faggot. Whoa. All right. Whoa. Bye. Past RV. Bye. Okay. All right. I managed to turn that one around. I wonder if I call him back. I don't want to sit here and listen to an old show though. That was long enough. But thanks, Crimson, for pointing that out to us. I did not remember that he was a carding victim originally and next thing you know he's calling into the voicemail and making songs for the pla he's made a few songs for us uh hello awesome uh i'm looking for mr bob dapolina uh he left his number uh to tell him about a free donut that i won okay. if uh, you can please call me back so i can right. go pick up my donut all right thanks mr Dobl- or no he's looking for mr dabalina thanks whoever you are no, Mr. Dobelina here. Yeah, hello. Um, wow. I can't find my fucking smokes anywhere. I don't know where they went. Uh, you, I can't. Uh, hey, hey. All right, thanks, Mama Fratelli. Hey, Roy. Uh, it's Andrew. Today's July hey, 16th. Hey, Andrew. 
And it's my birthday. I'm 21 now. If you wish me a happy birthday no. on air, that'd make me really happy. I refuse. Um, thank Won't you. Won't do it. I love you. Uh, have All a right. merry day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You're a grown ass man. You don't get birthdays anymore. Grow the fuck up. I just wanted to say, firstly, rest in peace to Nick Walters. Oh yeah. His laugh was pretty contagious, and I always enjoyed listening to him on the it phone. It sure show. was. I miss the good old days of Nick. So I want to ask if you ever heard of the YouTube show Gas Station Encounters? It's really Ooh. cool. It's like this guy owns a gas station and he just uploads all the camera footage and he's always showing everybody who's shoplifting from his gas station and sometimes he goes over it in like a America's Family Home video style and kind of, you know, narrating everything. It's pretty funny. You should check it out. I'm looking right. at it. Bye. Spotting a short change artist. Car runs into a canopy pole. Trying to use counterfeit money. Thieving on tour. Credit card thieves caught. Girl falls through ceiling. Oh, that's someone else's channel. That's not his. He's showing footage from other gas stations. But yeah, this looks like a cool channel. I will check this out. Gas Station Encounters on YouTube, everyone. I'll put a link in the show notes. I am subscribing to it. Brad, Brad. Brad, Brad. Hello. Oh, hi, Brad. I've, my, my actual name is Graham. But I've got, I've got a wee idea you could do for your co corporate, corporate office things. You can say I'm bringing in my demented granny. She only says two words or three words. And she only says, mind it over dear. And she throws toilet paper at you. Bye. Okay. That sounds great. What next, is that? Next time I do corporate favors, I'm going to say I'm bringing my grandma in and she's got dementia. Where is my stickers? I don't know. Where are your stickers? Hey, it's, uh, it's Henrik from the Disco. I just wanted to say, hey, Henrik. you know, Crispy is a really cool guy, and I just want to formally go on record as uh, I just want to apologize to Crispy for what I've said. You it's, know, he's better okay. at making music than me. He's better at everything. So, you know, have a good day. Have a good show. Uh, n nobody's better than making music than than you. Henrik, what are you talking about? You're the best. So, hi, Brad. I remember how you said about how you were going to travel and set up a studio in your band or something? Yeah. You, you could maybe make it like Breaking Bad, kind of like Meth Lab and the RV. Yeah, and you I'll make meth, Walter too. And Carlito could be Jesse, you know, and you can hide from the NSA or the FCC or the, I don't know. Bye. It's going to be great. It's going to be an adventure. I'm just going to pull up my RV in residential neighborhoods and leech their free Wi-Fi for a few days while I put together shows and make calls. I can't wait. Hey, Brad. I just want to say that my favorite show is the Pizza for Your Face prank call. We're not Brad flabbergasted customer. I yeah. have to say that I quote the uh, cornerstone episode. The guy says that uh, I'm confused. And he says you sound a little bit gender confused or whatever he says. Yeah, that's hilarious. a good one, not Brad. <laughs> also, I just want to say that you're the funniest prank caller in the entire fucking world. Oh, you! And I love you, Brad. Really? A after you just told me that not Brad is your favorite call, I am the funniest. I hope you and I'm I'm not your favorite. I'm just the funniest somehow. Shows, and I hope you, you make play sense. this on your next show because it'll be pretty interesting it makes sense. to hear myself under a minute. I'm keeping this voicemail. I think it says it's been a minute now, but it's been ringing. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Later. Thanks for doing all this talking and making it longer. You would have been closer to thirty seconds than a minute, but you had to talk about how long it was. Mr. And... Carter, do you know who is in federal prison? Who? What happens to people like you in federal prison? Uh, what, what, what? You think you know what's uh, in there, but you don't. You put that out there for the rest of the world to see and enjoy and laugh I'm at. I'm just going to sit here in awkward silence like I did in the courtroom. What do you think about putting things out there that humiliate people? Yep. Shame on you, boy. Shame. Shame on me. Thank you for making me relive the uncomfortableness of that Hey, situation. motherfucker, it's Carrot Top. The real Carrot Top. I know, I know, chairman of the board was badass, I know this, but look oh, yeah, here, you've used me as a punchline for the last time. I'm coming for you, Brad Carter. I'm gonna shove my fist so far up your ass. Crap. 
Yeah, take that, motherfucker. Yeah, first, you got, got me there, man. didn't you? I'm coming for Crazy Calvin. I'm coming for Jack Heliquin. Oh, I'm coming for all of them. And then I'm going to get you, motherfucker. Yeah, kiss my ass. Carrot Top out. All right, bye, Carrot Top. And that is the very last voicemail of today's show. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you enjoyed that live show. I am definitely going to do more live show like that. I'm going to do more dream shows. There's so much potential for dream shows. I need to do a lot more nighttime shows in the coming weeks or months or whatever and tell everyone about my dreams using your ideas from the chat room. Thank you, Whoa There, and Michael S., and Robert W., and Todd K. 63 and Not Dan for sponsoring today's episode. If you'd like to support the show, the place to go to is patreon.com slash phone losers. If you sign up for just five bucks a month, you have full access to 118 secret shows that you've hopefully never heard before. They're called Hobo Sows. They're shorter shows than this show is, but that's probably because there's no voicemails and no long intros and stuff. It's just pranks. I did one, I think, on Sunday where I called up a bunch of bakeries and tried to order chocolate cakes for my dogs, and they were like, what? You can't order chocolate cakes for your dog? That'll kill him. And I convinced them to do it anyway, so... If you're convincing enough, you can convince a bakery employee to help you kill your dog. Grocery store bakeries are basically assisted suicide doctors for your dog. Don't pay the vet a bunch of money to put your dog down. Just order a full sheet cake with lots of chocolate in it and fudge filling and have them write on the top, Who's a good boy? And there you go. Problem solved. This life hack has been brought to you by the Snowplow Show. You're welcome for that, everyone. I'm ending today's show with a brand new song by BD Beats. This one is called Sensei Doug Gets No Respect. And if you like this song, there is a link to a SoundCloud in the show notes. If you want to download this one from BD Beats. Hello, Basil. Hey there, it's uh, Sensei Doug from the Karate Place. Okay. Uh, you know, just, just down, the, down the plaza a bit. Yeah. Hey, um, I was wondering, like, do you think from now on when I walk by, do you, could you guys just be a little bit more respectful and, and bow toward me? Because I am a sensei. And, huh? you know, sometimes I have students with me and it doesn't make it look like I'm very well respected here in the plaza if you're not bowing, bowing at me. Okay. So, like, when I walk by from now on in my sensei uniform, could you, okay. could you just instruct the employees there to bow to me? All right. I, That's fine. Okay. I'd really appreciate it. It's just it's just weird when you don't. Because you know everyone else here in the plaza does, but you guys... it's like you Everybody else in the plaza does? For the most part, yeah, except for the new people. And I always go in and have a talk with them, but it seems like you guys never do. Oh, okay. Well, uh, hold on one second so you can uh, talk to uh, the owner here. Okay. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hey, it's Sensei Doug from the uh, from the dojo, from the karate place. Yeah. And I was wondering if you guys could just uh, be more respectful when I walk by. When I was what? Could you be more respectful when I walk by? Why? What happened? Uh, well, every time I walk by, uh, you guys don't uh, stop what you're doing and bow toward me. What? I just need everyone there when I walk to by. Bow to you. Yeah. To bow to you. Yeah, because usually I walk by and you guys just look at me. You don't, you don't bow to me or anything. And sometimes I'm walking. Bow to you? Why should I bow to you? Well, do, you do you bow to me when you walk by? No. I, no? Well, I, I would if you guys would bow to me first, but I'm a sensei. So Are you, you okay, man? Are you all right? Is this the owner? Yeah, yeah. It's Sensei Doug. And I'm a sensei, so you bow to me first, and then I bow back to you. That's how it works. What the, is this the owner next door of the dojo place? Yeah, but some yes, it is. Sometimes I'm walking by with my students, though, and you guys don't bow toward me, and it makes it look like nobody respects me in this plaza. No one respects you in this plaza. Yeah, you need to. I command respect. You need to show me respect. Man, respect. Are you are you on crack or what? Are you on drugs or what? Man? No, is everything I'm... all right with you? Is everything all right? I'm over here at dojos. I don't see nothing. Yeah, I'm upstairs. Are you okay? I, I'm I'm in the back. Like stop stop banging on my window. It's not even open yet. 
Well, open the door then, so I can see you. No, I'm I know just, who you are. I'm just letting you know on the phone. Uh, like just, just, just. I want to know who it is. Can you? Can I see? I know the owner. This doesn't sound like the owner. No, I'm not the owner. This is Sensei Doug. I'm one of the teachers here. I work with Coach Kevin. Okay. But and it doesn't matter if Coach Kevin walks by. He's not a sensei. I'm an actual sensei. So I just need you to like just you and all the other employees to stop what you're doing in the house. Are you all right, man? I'm, I'm fine. Why do you keep asking me if I'm all right? Hello? Yes, hello. Yeah, who, who is this, please? Uh, who are you? Who the fuck is this? This is like the third person I've talked to there. Yeah, you're telling people that you're me. You? Who are you? I'm Kevin. No, this is Sensei Doug. Sensei who? Doug? Sensei Doug. I work at the dojo. You don't work here. Who do you think you are? Sensei Doug. Yep. You're nuts, dude. I'm not nuts, and I don't appreciate the... You're, you're not respecting me at all. Like, nobody respects me, it seems like, in the closet. Nobody does respect you. You're, you're crazy. And you're full of shit. Oh, excuse my language, man. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, just, you're just upsetting people. And you're and you're calling people and telling them that you're me? No, you're impersonating I, me? I did not say that. I said I'm Sensei Doug. Dude, Sensei a, Doug. What style do you teach, Doug? Oh, I teach all the styles. Like, more styles than all the styles. Yep. Okay, let's... You want to come in for an audition? Uh, no, I don't need to. I, I, I work there already. I'm just saying, like, when, when I walk you, by, people need to... Please don't tell people you work in my school. We don't hire psychopaths. I'm not a psychopath, and I don't appreciate the accusation. Yes, you are, dude. You're, you're batshit crazy. I am not, and, and, and that, that's the same amount of disrespect that everyone gives me every time I walk by. They don't bow Chances to me. are you crazy. get that disrespect because you're batshit crazy, I'm and you're trying to stir up problems, and you're impersonating me. No, I never impersonated you. Who said I impersonated you? So we're going to find you. I'm going to track down who you are, and you're going to answer to this. Oh, oh, is that a threat? I'm going to call the FBI line. Both of my parents are FBI. I'm going to call the local sheriff and let him know you're trying to start problems. The we local have the property sheriff, manager your, was just here. Your cousin? Doug, don't ever tell people you're me again. No, I never said I was you. I said I'm Sensei Doug. You're not Sensei Doug. I am. You're batshit crazy dude, Doug. No, he that, needs to quit lying to that, That's very disrespectful. You, you take that back. I'm not taking it back. Bye, Doug. You better take it Go back. Go fuck off. Hey. Hey. Hey, listen, motherfucker, you call here again, I'm going to knock you out.